that started. There we go. Okay, thanks, Christina. You can get started now. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, I was telling Amanda before, um, I do have some slides, but I also have a lot of things that I like to show, um, which is just below me here. Um, so I thought it might be easier if I just um, not show the slides, but instead, um, you know, just connect with you through through the screen and I can hold up and show uh, the items that I'm speaking about, because I think it's really important um, you know, to see those things clearly. Normally I would do these presentations in person, um, and I was sharing that it, you know, it looks almost like a craft sale in front of me as I'm presenting. Um, but those are the, the items that at the end people want to come up and get a closer look at. So, so I hope that's okay with all of you. Um, please let me know in the chat or um, just unmute it and, and stop me. Let me know if you have any issues hearing me uh, or anything like that. Um, I am in my office today. It's a little bit dark. Uh, we are having some renovations done in our basement. So I was trying to remove myself from the noise as much as possible. Uh, so you may hear some banging around. Um, hopefully it's it's not too too noisy. Um, and I've also you know, secured my pets in other areas of the house because of it. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, everything is good. Um, but again, please let me know if you have any problems hearing. So Amanda kind of gave you a little bit of a background about myself. Um, so I was a, a, um, a board member at Muskoka Conservancy from 2015 to 2020 um, and continued to chair uh, and was a founder of the Little Sprouts Eco Club. Um, so we meet monthly. I'm sure you've heard about that program before um, with all the, the little kids. And so we've done lots of, you know, zero waste workshops with them as well and little crafts and things. So I think it's important from, a, you know, a small age all the way up. Uh, to be conscious of our waste. Um, and Christmas is a perfect time to kind of, you know, really take an inventory of our waste. Um, I'm also a town councillor in Gravenhurst. So for anybody that lives in Gravenhurst, uh, I am the Ward 5 councillor. Um, so you may have seen me in different meetings and things like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so in, uh, I think it was 2018, we uh, created a friend of mine and I created what was called uh, Reusable Revolution, which you can find on Facebook. Um, we just share different tips and tricks, um, much of the things, you know, that I'll be speaking about today. Um, but more importantly, we highlight local businesses that allow you to, you know, say, um, bring your container and, and fill up versus getting a packaged item, things like that. So highlighting local, uh, local businesses in Muskoka. So today uh, I'm going to go over the presentation itself isn't too long because I like to give a lot of time at the end for uh, questions and discussion. Um, but I will um, be um, first, you know, kind of talking about uh, what what does it mean to be on a zero waste journey? I think a lot of people are, um, you know, a little terrified when they hear that term, uh, thinking it's an all or nothing kind of thing. So I'll be talking about that. Um, I'll be talking about why it's important to cut back our personal waste, especially locally to Muskoka. Um, and then I'll be talking about zero waste planning. So what we uh, tend to call the hierarchy of needs <laughs> instead of the hierarchy of needs. Uh, I'll go over the five R's um, that we you know, should be remembering while we're uh, over this holiday season. Uh, and then finally, I'll be going through some zero waste holiday tips for things like decorations, food prep, stocking stuffers, gift wrap, gifts, uh, and then we'll leave some time at the end for discussion. So first, what is zero waste? Um, the goal for zero waste is to have a completely circular economy with no trash to be sent to landfills, incinerators, or the ocean. That would be the dream. Um, while we may never attain a completely zero waste lifestyle uh, in the world at this time, um, there are so many small steps that we can take to, uh, you know, it's those little steps still create a huge impact. So a lot of the time, uh, the question I get is, but isn't recycling enough? Like I'm already recycling, I'm putting those things at my curb, you know, why can't that just be enough? Um, and so the short answer is, uh, you know, we're lucky to live here and have a robust recycling program uh, where a lot of the things that we do put at the curb do end up as other products in the end. Um, however, I think our, our thinking that every little thing we put in our blue bin uh, is going to turn into something else just simply isn't. Uh, 
Um, an example would be, you know, the black plastic coffee lids. Anything that you see that's black plastic, that is on its last cycle. Uh, I think it's between seven and nine times it can be turned into something else. And by the time you have a black plastic, um, that is its last life. So while you might put it in your blue recycling bin, um, the chances are in the end that they won't end up being recycled. So we are lucky to have the recycling program that we have. However, um, we just need to be mindful of the things that we are putting in the bin um, instead of what we uh, tend to call wish cycling, uh, which would be, you know, you're putting something in that you're kind of hoping, you know, because it feels better than throwing it in the trash. Uh, but in the end, really, we're just paying taxpayer dollars to have somebody sort that and in the end, it goes into the trash. It's better to start at the beginning when you're purchasing the product. I also just wanna talk a little bit about our local landfill. Um, so this has probably um, changed since the last time I did this slide, but um, our current landfill, the Rosewarn landfill site has a 950,000 ton capacity. Um, which was supposed to last us 40 years, but that's only if waste aversion occurs. So it's currently looking at about 25 years. And that's what I, I say when I mean it's probably been updated. I'm thinking, you know, that that number is probably coming down. Um, so we really, you know, need to up our efforts to make sure that that landfill site uh, remains and that we're not looking for another landfill site before this, you know, 20, 25 years. Um, I mean, I have kids that are 14 and 11 right now, and I would love to, you know, maintain this landfill site and not have to start looking for another one for them. So it just goes to show you that, you know, there, there are things that we can do and that we should be doing. Um, and that, you know, thankfully, there's a lot of options now. So I will be talking more about some of the good options that we have. So our hierarchy of needs. Um, Basically, you know, I'm going to give the example because we're talking about the holidays. Um, I'm going to give the example of a cloth napkin. So uh, when we're looking at, say, I'm having a holiday event, I'm having people over um, and I need some cloth napkins. So the first thing I would do in this hierarchy of needs would be use what I have. That's number one. So do I have, you know, do I want to use my mismatched old, you know, cloth that I have. That would be number one. If I don't want to do that. The next thing I would do would be to borrow. So I would, you know, call up my mom. Hey, you know, having the, I'm having Christmas dinner here. Do you have those cloth napkins that grandma made, you know, years ago? Could I use those? Uh, if that doesn't work. The next step up would be to swap. So I know someone in my neighborhood that makes cloth napkins. I might uh, say, hey, I've got, you know, I've, I've made some baked goods or um, say I make jewelry. Could we swap so I could get 12 napkins from you? Um, if that's not an option, the next thing up would be to thrift it. So you might go on a you know dollar auction online, um, go to the Salvation Army, secondhand stores and see if someone, if they, they might have some there. The next step up from there would be to make it. Um, if you're crafty and you can uh, sew, then I would maybe, you know, decide to buy some cloth and make or use some more cheese and make some. Uh, and then very lastly, it would be, okay, I've gone through all of those steps. Uh, still, you know, not coming up with anything, really want some cloth napkins for my Christmas dinner, uh, then I would go and buy them. So when I go to buy them, I would be looking to make sure they're good quality. Uh, you know, they're made from a local person is even better. Um, and then they're not coming, you know, prepackaged anymore. So those are our kind of hierarchy of needs that we go through in our head uh, when we're looking at shopping for the holidays. Uh, so the five R's that we go through, I mean, everybody knows the four R's for sure, which is refuse, reduce, reuse, uh, and recycle. But we like to add in repair and rot uh, to our five R's. Um, so, you know, with zero waste refusing, I think we all know, um, no, thank you. I don't need that sample at the store. You know, no, thank you. I don't, I don't need a gift this year. Please donate in my name. Um, instead, if you're wanting to get me something, things like that. Um, reduces, you know, the, the number of items we are bringing in, the number of, you know, meals that we're preparing, how much we're preparing, um, that sort of thing. Uh, reuse as much as you can. So um, I like to think if someone, you know, gives me a gift bag, um, then I would be reusing that. Uh, those are pretty simple. I think most people now do things like that. Um, repair is a big one. I think it's so, um, 
easy now to just, uh, you know, throw it out and buy a new one uh, when something breaks down. And it's harder and harder to get um, that that uh, qualified person to repair something for you. Um, so we really need to, you know, pay attention to those local uh, repair people. For example, there's a shoe repair person in Bracebridge. I think he's the last one out there. Um, but I've definitely taken my boots there before and he's amazing. Um, so knowing where those repair people are, there's also a cell phone repair person in Bracebridge. Um, we just got our dryer repaired uh, by somebody. Uh, so just recognizing like, can I repair it? What does that look like? Or who can I find uh, to help me repair it? Um, and then lastly, obviously recycle and rot would be to compost. So there's a lot of food waste that happens over the holidays. Uh, if we can compost, um, that helps to cut down. If you don't have compost at your place, uh, if you live in towns, then you would have the green bin compost option. If you don't have that option, um, there are other options that you can do. You can drop off your compost bin at the transfer station yourself. Um, there's also a, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, it's like a, it sits on the top of the counter and it, um, you would put your waste in and then it, it uh, biodegrades it. Um, so that it is an expensive option, but if you, you know, if it's something you live in an apartment building and you really want to cut back on your waste, uh, that might be an investment that you would want to make. Um, they do work really well. Um, and then you would put those grounds um, either in a garden or, uh, you know, dump it into the forest, things like that afterwards. Um, so that would be another option. So now that I've kind of gone over some background of zero waste and what it means to be zero waste, um, and everyone on their own kind of journey to zero waste. I uh, want to talk a little bit more about holidays, um, which can, you know, all of a sudden we've got lots of extra um, extra waste that happens during the holidays. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is decorating. So um, that's you know after Remembrance Day and we all start decorating our homes, uh, it can it can add to a lot of added waste. Um, so I think when we start right from the beginning. Um, you know, we, I gave the example of the cloth napkins. Um, I would recommend if you're buying cloth napkins, um, to use a solid color like red, um, just because that would, you know, you can use that for other holidays as well. Canada Day, birthdays, Valentine's Day, you know, whatever. But it doesn't have to be, it just, that kind of helps to, to reuse them. If it had a big Christmas, you know, theme on it, then you would only be using those at that time of year. So, um, another option is, um, outdoor, you know, wreaths or planters. A lot of people put those out. Um, so a few different options. One would be to find a local greenhouse um, and that will take back the pots afterwards. So if you have those plastic pots, a lot of local places will, they need them back for the spring. Um, so they would take them back. I know, um, I don't know if any of you know Laura Thomas, who's a part of the Conservancy. She runs a nursery, um, Seasons in the Country often takes them back. Um, so that's, I'm not sure if some of maybe the bigger, uh, you know, like Walmart store, they probably wouldn't, but you could always ask. Um, so that would be option number one would be to be able to give it back to somebody that will use it again. Option number two would be to save it and store it. And then for the next year, um, you know, attempt to make your own um, out of, you know, just branches and things that you're finding on the forest floor. Um, that can be a fun workshop to do too. Um, so you could bring that with you. Um, another option would be to a lot of places now would rent them. So, you know, you call a company, they come and set up your front door, uh, and then at the end, they take it all back down for you. So um, those are just a few options of things, um, because I do know that a lot of, you know, the gardening, uh, those plastic pots, once again, they are the black plastic. Um, so they're getting discarded at the end if you're not finding a place for them after that. Um, another option, or I'm sorry, another um, decorating thing that we do in the holidays is, you know, just things around your house, like you're putting up little decorative things. Um, an example I have here, I'm sure you can see it here. Um, I didn't make this, this is for this. Uh, but it is an option to do old Christmas cards from previous years that have been sent in the mail. Um, you would just, you know, cut out the front and then put it on a, a board. Um, or plaster it on somewhere. And so that's the way that, you know, it's low waste and you can just put them up around your house. Um, kind of gives it, you know, a little Christmas feel that you're reusing those, um, those cards. For my kids, we still do advent calendars. They love their advent calendar. 
Um, so for us, we chose a wooden advent calendar with little wooden doors. Um, and we've used the same ones for years and years. And I just go to the bulk store, the bulk bar, um, and I would fill up, you know, little jars. Um, so I'd be filling up a jar with little candies, mints, things like that. And I'm putting those in each little wooden uh, door versus, you know, a big packaged chocolate um, wasteful advent calendar. So we've used those for years, you know, at the end of the holiday season, that just goes back in the basement for storage until the next year. So there's no waste with that. Um, and then decorations too. So we want to look, um, you know, even like Christmas tree decorations. I have a couple examples here. Um, but we want to look, you know, locally is great. Um, I've got two examples here from local artists that um, one I bought at Arts at the Albion. This is a local painting. Uh, and these were just fun that someone made at a Christmas market that I bought. Um, but so they come with no packaging. Um, every year I like to put um, an ornament in my kids' stocking so that when they're older and move out and have their own uh, lives and their own families that they you know, would receive that box of their ornaments for their own tree to start. So. Um, so it's kind of a little, you know, tradition every year to to pick and choose locally made uh, Christmas ornaments that mean something to them, but they're also low waste because they're locally made. So you may find them at little Christmas markets and things like that. So those are just a few um, ideas of when you're, you know, decorating your house, um, to, the ways to think about, you know, how to, how can I do this with cutting my waste back? Um, my last uh, comment and I think a lot of I, I surprise a lot of people when I say this because people say well a Christmas tree um, you know what's the more low waste uh, real or fake and I'm gonna say fake and the reason I'm gonna say that is because we've had the same tree since like for 15 years um, or longer and if every single year I'm cutting down a tree and the resources, you know, to cut it down, to ship it, um, to discard of it, um, for me personally, and people may think differently, I'd love to hear your comments at the end, but for me, I think that, you know, as long as you're hanging on to that um, fake tree, I mean, clearly there's nothing, I'm not gonna upgrade it. It looks the same every year um, and I will have it forever. So that's one, you know, one tree that's already was created uh, 20 years ago and we're using it forever um, versus, you know, 20 years of trees being cut down. So um, another option could be that you do rent trees. People do rent trees now, they're potted and I love that idea. I think if I, you know, didn't live right in town and um, could maybe find a tree farm, something like that, I think that would be a, a really fun idea to, you know, rent, rent the tree, you give it back to them. Um, so that I think, I think that would be pretty cool. But uh, for me, I am gonna say a fake tree, in my opinion, is is uh, a, a lower uh, carbon option. But again, I'd love to hear the comments at the end. So next up is food prep. Uh, this one usually scares people because when you're walking into the into the grocery store uh, during the holidays, there's just so much stuff and it's all you know right in right in your face. Uh, and it can be so easy just to you know purchase that packaged cheese tray, for example because um, it's right there and we're all busy. Um, but I do have some tips that, you know, will cut down on your food waste um, and can kind of help you, you know, stay on track um, and see, you know, see which which places you can minimize some of that waste when you're going grocery shopping on the holidays. Um, I do want to point out a, a recent study by the Ecology Center found that there is an increase in 25% of food garbage between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So when we recognize that it's there, um, we recognize that, you know, there's just, there's just so much of it. Um, so it's nice to be able to cut back when you can. Um, a few options I already spoke about before is to go to the bulk barn or other bulk stores. Um, they let you fill up your jars. You weigh them ahead of time. And then um, for me, we were doing Christmas baking yesterday. So, um, you know, filled up all the all the uh, baking essentials from chocolate chips to um, flour, everything you need. Um, so that's a good place to start and kind of get your basics. I would say start with a list so that you know, you know, exactly where you're going and for what items. Um, I think that too is, is a, a huge factor and people, you know, you're at the grocery store. Oh, I need this, this, and this. I'm already here. I'll just grab it. And even though it's packaged, 
So knowing ahead of time that if you're doing baking or, you know, food prep of any kind and you want those basics, salt, sugar, um, flour, that kind of thing, um, you can get all of those things at the bulk barn. And sometimes they are cheaper. Um, I find uh, they do have sales on Sundays um, at the bulk barn. You get a 15% discount if you bring your jars in. So just knowing those little tips, um, you can save money uh, doing that. Um, so make a plan before you go, um, you know, decide which items you could get that are low waste or, or no waste, for example, produce. Um, if you're, you know, making a salad or, or um, you know, stuffing, things like that, knowing which, which things you could get uh, without waste. Um, and then there are just going to be a few things that you probably will be able to get um, without waste. So uh, if there's something that you know that you that it is going to come in a package, um, some tips that I would say is for sure look for it in glass uh, before plastic. Um, so if you're sauces or things like that, sometimes you'll see um, you can find them in glass. Um, for example, ketchup. We always buy the Heinz ketchup in glass bottles at Sobeys. Um, and if you... Um, if you can't find it in glass, then tin is the next because we know that that would be recycled. Um, obviously, plastic would be the the final kind of last one if you know that it's only going to be you're only going to be able to find it in uh, in plastic. Um, I have a couple examples too. Uh, for one, so we shop at Sobeys because I live in Gravenhurst, so we get our um, dairy from Miller's Dairy, which is an Ontario local um, dairy company. Um, again, at the end, I'd love to hear if others do this as well. Um, you can actually go online and they have, you know, meet the cow days and things like that. Um, so we return the bottles. It's $2 to return them. So really any baking or, or cooking that we're doing, uh, you know, kind of scratch dairy off the list for, um, for waste uh, because we're returning these each time. So, and it is really delicious. So, um, and um, lastly, if you do find something that's wrapped in paper, um, you can use that paper to wrap up your Christmas ornaments at the end. Uh, we do that with our toilet paper. We buy toilet paper wrapped in paper, not plastic. Um, so then I would use all that. I collect all that paper um, and then I would wrap up our Christmas ornaments, you know, the Christmas balls and things like that at the end with those. So, um, so that's kind of some food prep examples. Um, I do have an example of a zero waste meal that you could do um, for the holidays. So for example, stuffing recipe. Um, so for the bread, um, my husband makes sourdough bread, uh, but you can also, we would use that, but you could also go to a local bakery and ask them for egg bread or sourdough bread uh, and ask them not to put it in any packaging that you would bring your own bag when you pick it up. Um, for butter, uh, what we do is we buy in bulk and I save the, the wrapping from the butter and I freeze it. So then, for example, yesterday my daughter and I were baking, I would use that as to grease the pan. So we use that until it's absolutely clear of any butter uh, and then we would be recycling it. But it goes through, you know, several cycles, uh, at least, you know, and they fold up pretty flat so they don't take up any real estate in your freezer. And um, so that's how we would we would get away with uh, uh, minimizing some of that waste. Um, any onions or garlic or celery, things like that, we could buy at the in the produce section uh, without waste. Um, sage, parsley, rosemary, you could all get from the bulk barn. Bulk barn. Um, or you could, if you have a plant at home that you're growing rosemary, um, just you know cut off a little sprig of it. Um, vegetable stock, a lot of people make it uh, from scratch. You could also buy it from a local butcher's shop. Um, and they usually come in the big mason jars. We freeze ours. Um, so we would just pull that out and use that. And then obviously salt, pepper, and other herbs you also could get from the bulk store uh, in your jars. So then we move on to our mashed potatoes. We would be using russet, russet potatoes that are loose from the produce bins. Um, my Miller's dairy milk, uh, the butter, the same. I'd be saving those, uh, saving that wrapper, and then salt and pepper if you're putting pepper in it from the bulk store. Um, meat for your holidays. Often we work with our local butchers, um, either from a farm or McMaster's Meats is, is an incredible uh, places like that. And the, the kind of smaller the, the shop is, the more willing they are to work with you on your, you know, low waste needs. So if you can say, I'd prefer to have it wrapped in butcher paper, it is still a little bit of waste, but it's not that plastic you know, packaging. 
um, that's, you know, vacuum seals and that sort of thing. So I find the smaller the shop, the more, the, the easier they are uh, to work with your needs. And then lastly, a vegetable dish where you could just buy, you know, green beans or carrots uh, from the produce section, anything that's loose in the produce section. Uh, and don't be afraid to ask the produce manager, um, you know, hey, I noticed that your green beans are wrapped. Uh, do you have any in the back? And often they'll say, you know, yeah, they're loose in the back. We wrap them to stay fresh. Um, and they've let me go into the back and get them before. So um, as long as you say it nice enough uh, and, you know, you kind of strike up that conversation, um, then they're they're willing to help you out. So now we move on to the fun stuff, which is the stocking stuffers. Um, so typically when we look at stocking stuffings, um, stuffing stockings, <laughs> uh, you know, we're looking at little trinkets, little uh, small prepackaged goodies, self-care items. Uh, those things do take up a lot of waste. Um, at, you know, just at the end of the holidays, you've got packaging, you've got you know, um, shampoo bottles, things like that. So um, a few tips of cutting back on that would be um, over the years, I collect um, just anywhere we go. I collect these little tins. So you can kind of see them there. Um, and so I would use these little tins, or this one's like a little jam jar, which I thought was cute. Um, I collect these little things and then would go to a bulk store and get um, you know, just little candies and chocolates, and I would fill those instead of buying a chocolate bar or things like that. Um, so they're just a little cute. You know, you can buy different unique little ones. And still have your little treats in your in your stocking, but not have the epic base uh, that comes along with it. Um, another thing that I recently did, and what well, we've done in years past too, is I brought um, jam jars into Ritual Candles, uh, and I said I would like a lemon scent. Um, so he made me a lemon coconut candle. Uh, it smells amazing. Uh, it was eight dollars to fill the, the jar, and so I bought a, I bought a whole case of them. To see it out. Um, but that's another way to, you know, you make your local, you make your unique scent uh, for your own family or to give to somebody. Um, but I brought in the jars so I could, use, you know, use jars uh, and they're happy to fill. They've done little cups for us before, little sugar bowls. Um, they're happy to work with whatever you bring in. Uh, and, you know, it was under a week that they were done for me. So um, it's a nice little, you know, unique, unique gift. Um, I would say look, so obviously books are why I love to read. Um, so books are low waste, especially if you can buy them used um, or, you know, re re give them to other people when you're done reading them, um, maybe to like a, you know, donate to a school, but if you're done with them, that kind of thing. Um, what I like to do is I look for local stores that sell handmade unique items, um, homemade ornaments, which I already showed you, lip, lip tint, moisturizers and tins, um, socks, wooden games, things like that. Um, so I find, you know, the more I kind of look around at craft markets, um, little stores on the main street, little mom and pop shops, um, that's where I'm kind of looking for these little unique um, ideas that I can that I can give in a stocking. So for example, this, we were just at a recent trip to Italy um, and this is a little, um, you know, wine decanter. Um, so with the Amalfi Coast on it. So that might be a little trinket that I thought, okay, well, there's no waste associated with it. We will definitely use this. Um, it, it brings up memories of the trip. Uh, it's not wrapped in plastic. Um, other options would be for adults anyways. Um, organic seeds I have for our garden for next year. And these come just wrapped in, in regular paper. Uh, we also use these year after year. So you, know, you use five seeds and you wrap those back up again. Um, jewelry from local markets, we might, um, I've got two daughters, so, you know, I'm constantly kind of looking for little earrings and things. Um, they're loose, so they're not wrapped in. Uh, my husband loves to uh, bake bread, and so I found these little bags, which say bread on them. So we use these often uh, when we're, you know, bringing, bringing bread to someone's house. Uh, he'll make a, a loaf of French bread, um, and we'll throw it in these bags. They wash well just came wrapped three, three in a roll. That might be something. Um, also this little, so for my kids, for hot chocolate, I don't know if you can see that, but this is a, a butter tin, actually a butter jar. Um, it's, you know, not a huge, I think it's 125 milliliters of butter, um, but it came with a reusable lid. So I kept them and I just put little hot chocolate in it with little, you know, you can put marshmallows or I've got little candy canes crumpled up in it. So they're still getting that, that hot chocolate treat. 
um, but they're not getting the single use, you know, waste that, that comes along with. So those are just kind of a few. Um, we always give out soaps too. There's lots of local soap makers, um, you know, gift certificates. So this is a recent one I got for my birthday for um, Metatron's Garden, which is in Gravenhurst, but it's for a workshop. Um, so little gift certificates for local experiences are such a great thing to put in a stocking that's not, you know, it's not wasteful, um, but it's an experience that they'll remember as well. Um, and then lastly, because we're beekeepers, um, you know, we always we always give honey uh, to people. They make great stocking stuffers. We take the jars back and we reuse them. So those are just a few ideas for stockings, what we do at home um, to try to cut back on our waste and still make it fun for us to use. Next up is gift wrap. Um, so I have a few different options to show you on what we use for our gift wrap. Um, Canadians generate 540,000 tons of waste from gift wrapping and shopping bags every year. I think a lot of people don't realize that when they put their, you know, wrapping paper at the blue bin at the, at the end of the holidays, they think it's being recycled. But anything that includes glitter, which includes Christmas cards, anything that includes glitter or shiny paper, um, those things are not recyclable. So um, they would be, again, someone would be sorting through that waste on a conveyor belt to pull out the things that are actually recycled, uh, recyclable, and then the rest goes into the landfill. So uh, if we can cut back on, you know, using any of those items uh, and just using reusable items, then we're, you know, saving that person the, and, the, and the taxpayer dollars of somebody, you know, sorting through that uh, and knowing that it's just going to end up in the weight in the landfill anyways. So for us at home, um, we use cloth, Christmas cloth. Um, I just went to a fabric store, you know, maybe five years ago, and we've been using the same every single year. I fold it up at the end of the season, uh, it goes back in the box, and every year we pull it back out again. As you can see, it's still got a really cute pattern on it. Um, you know, it's not see-through, so um, this is a like a huge square of it, so it fits most things. We would just kind of double it up uh, to wrap it if it needs to be a smaller item. Um, but so it still looks pretty under this tree, you know, but it still looks, it's got those fun patterns. Um, even if we gift it to my nephews and nieces, uh, I'm wrapping it in that and the, and the parents are giving it back to me at the end. So really I don't buy any, any um, gift wrap at all. Um, and then a few years ago, I had a local person again, make these little wooden tags. So that's the picture that you saw. Um, in this the presentation um, intro. Um, so one says mom, we've got dad, and then my daughter's names. So we got four each made for each of us. So each tag kind of keeps me on budget too, knowing that my kids get four presents uh, that are wrapped. So, um, and again, like it was just, it was so easy. They were so easy to work with. Um, I'll try to remember the name at the end of the person that made them. Um, but many people do do it. Um, and you know, they've lasted us for years. And so every year this is, you know, we could use these for birthdays, we could use them for graduation, anything. Um, they're just very simple and they wrap up at the end of the holidays uh, with everything else. And I've got no no gift wrap waste um, with them. Um, another option if you you know don't have any of those options is often people give you baked goods and tins. Um, so we would keep those. And maybe if you know I don't have the right size of cloth, I might use that to put to put something in it as well. Um, and then lastly, um, sometimes we do you know if we go to a store, we don't have our bags, and we get a paper bag. Um, I save all of those throughout the year, and I would just use those you know to put under the tree. And then once again, they go back again, um, and I save them to reuse them again and again. So at least with a paper bag that isn't shine, you know, have that shine or the glitter on it. In the end, this could be recycled, whereas the other one is not. So those are kind of our options that we do um, for wrapping at home. Other options could be, you know, wrapped in newspaper, um, you know, or other kind of paper like that. Uh, you could put little, um, you know, Christmas, um, like go outside and take little branches from little evergreen, uh, bushes and trees and kind of uh, put wrap those in with twine on the front to make it look a little bit more festive. Uh, anything like that that's really cute, um, but it doesn't create that added waste at the end. 
I have to say the gift wrapping is my favorite part because I love to see it all under the tree um, and just know that there's no waste there. It's, it's an incredible feeling. So lastly, and probably my favorite thing to talk about is zero waste holiday gifts. Um, so some tips I would say uh, would be to, you know, look for gift experiences. I know I talked about that uh, singing bowl workshop. Um, but gift experiences, even for my kids, they love to, you know, um, look forward to that after the holidays. So whether it's a concert ticket um, or, you know, an outing to do something together, um, you know, I wrap it up fun for them, um, but it's something that they can look forward to. Um, for my husband, I do a lot of uh, experience gifts for him as well. Um, and they've paid off over the over the years, I will say. Uh, one of the first ones was a sourdough workshop at the oven in Bracebridge. And, you know, he was hooked right away. Um, it was an incredible experience. I think it was only like $50 or something. Uh, but he's been making bread ever since for years and years. So it worked out for the whole family. Uh, but it was a really fun day. And, um, you know, it's it's just experiences like that that are great. Um, another uh, uh, gift that I had given him one year was, um, I was supposed to give him a knife blading workshop. Um, but because it was through COVID, they didn't have it anymore. So instead, um, we had the guy, if you can see this, homemade knife. Um, we got to go to his workshop. He gave us a tour, um, you know, asked us exactly what kind of knife um, my husband wanted and made it specifically for him. Um, so because of that experience, since then, we've purchased three knives from, um, it's called Henshaw Blades in Huntsville. And a relationship has been created there. So my husband's an electrician. Um, they got to talking. Um, you know, he needed an electrician. So it's those relationships when you're dealing with a local company. He'll stop by our house in Gravenhurst and sharpen our knives, uh, which is incredible. And so knowing that, um, you know, that gift turned into uh, a long-standing relationship with somebody who's willing to look after, you know, your needs and. Um, and then the next time we come back, he's telling us, oh, I've got this for you and uh, remembers us. So I think, you know, having those little uh, relationships with local makers is so important. Um, another um, gift that one year I, I asked a local potter in Huntsville again, um, if she could make me, we are beekeepers, so if she could make me some mugs with bees on them, which she did an incredible job. Uh, but since then, my mother-in-law was looking for gifts for us and she has also contacted this local potter and we've now have you know over the years built up our entire dish set um, with these dishes from this local potter so again that relationship is is being made there um and she's you know willing to work with what we like um she's just as excited about the product as we are um, so it just makes it it makes it so much more uh, fun to be able to build that gift together with somebody um, and you're helping someone local, um, you know, to keep their business going. So um, I'm sure that's that's basically been my theme throughout is uh, local, local, local. You'll find less waste if it's local. Um, you know, there's less, you know, of a carbon footprint from the, the shipping and the, like the packaging for sure, but also the, the trucks driving it up. Um, you know, the delivery person out there, that kind of thing. But um, you can just meet so many incredible, uh, unique businesses that you might not even know exist in your own community. Um, but once you, you know, get to know them, they're willing to, you know, like another example would be this local artist that made this um, this Christmas ornament for me. She was selling them at Arts at the Albion, and now she's painting like a picture for me for another gift. So um, you just never know what future gifts might come of that to give people and their, you know, unique experiences or unique gifting items. So that's my favorite kind of aspect of, of the holidays is trying to find those little unique things that we can give, um, that we can keep local, um, whether it's, you know, like I know the Opera House in Gravenhurst is doing a trio of um, shows. So I thought that might be a fun gift. Um, so it's really fun to kind of think outside the box on what you might want to give somebody um, that's not just a generic, you know, go to the Canadian Tire or the, you know, the Walmart and, and find what they have there. So, um, so in closing, I just want to say, um, I know it's overwhelming when you think about zero waste, when you think about, oh, there's just so much of it, you know, I walk in the store, I can't do it. Um, I want to say that every small change you make is a huge win and you should celebrate that. 
Um, I think just knowing that we all will still produce waste. I still produce waste. I have a teenage daughter who likes very specific things. Um, and I can't change what other people, you know, want and do. All I can do is, you know, try to try to be that example and and celebrate those little wins when we do have them. Uh, and those wins add up over time. So for example, the wrapping, you know, that's one, you know, seems kind of small, but over the years, um, we haven't bought wrapping in years. So we're saving money. And, you know, it's just one more thing that we can kind of check off the list in our zero waste goals. Um, I also just want to say, if we all normalize asking stores and businesses uh, for no packaging, it's, uh, we have a better chance of that store owner allowing us to do it. So, you know, at the very beginning of my zero waste journey, I would bring in my container to the deli and ask, you know, can I have, can I have it put in here? And the answer was always no. Um, because it was a health and safety, you know, issue. Um, but then I went to the health and safety person and asked, um, you know, and it turned out it really isn't a health and safety issue. Uh, it's more, you know, what you're doing with it when you leave the store. So, you know, it's about educating yourself and, and the people working there too. Um, and then over time, building those relationships. So, you know, if that's something that's really important to me and I want to check that off my list, I might go and find a local butcher instead or, or buy a meat slicer or whatever um, to try to knock that off the list. Alternatively, that might not be something I'm ready to do yet. Uh, so I'll just kind of stick to some of the other, other things that seem a little bit more manageable for me. Um, so that's my presentation. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit. Um, I love to you know, hear any questions or comments or things that you're doing at home. Um, and yeah, I guess with that, I'll just uh, open it up for, for questions and comments. Thank you so much, Christina. That was so amazing. I try to be as sustainable as I can in my daily life, and there's always challenges with it. Um, so I found myself writing down lots of notes uh, while you were speaking about things that I just hadn't even thought of before. Um, I really love the idea of asking like people at the grocery store if there's options for um, getting things outside of packaging, because I know we'll go shopping. And we're just like, oh, we can't get cauliflower today because they only have it in plastic wrap. Um, and I'd never thought of, you know, just asking to see if they had some in the back that um, isn't wrapped. So I really love that idea. Um, and I also love that by being local, like it's not just sustainable and supporting a local business, but it's also creating relationships and connections with people, um, which is just fantastic as well. So, so many great ideas. I also love the Christmas cloth one. <laughs> Um, cause I find myself trying to get, um, just like the paper wrapping, but that comes wrapped in plastic too. And I, again, never thought of cloth. So that is amazing and something I'm definitely going to look into. Um, and I just wanted to add one idea that, or one thing that I was doing this year, um, for like a sustainable gift is, um, gifting plants. <laughs> so I've taken like cuttings or clippings of my plants. Um, and potted them and I'm using those as gifts. Um, and I, I really like that. And I suggest that to anyone who's a, a plant person or has a plant person on their list. So thank you so much, Christina. I see we've got some stuff in the chat here. So we'll take a look at that. Um, okay. of... While you're looking at the chat. Um, yeah. Something I forgot to mention was seasons in the country. I know at the beginning I was talking about trees and things like that. Yeah. But again, this goes back to relationship building. So I had called them, I think it was two years ago, uh, looking for a gift for my mom and I was really struggling um and so I said you know I kind of thought well their their name is seasons in the country could they do you know a seasonal something for my mom and they don't do that but she was so willing to work with me she got gave my mom uh, a wreath for Christmas like it, her, it was for her birthday so in November she got a wreath in the spring she got um uh uh, spring bulbs, you know, a little thing. In the summer, she got um, a summer planter box, like an herb planter box. And then in the fall, she got like fall mums. So it was so neat to kind of build this present out together with this business owner. Uh, and she was just as excited as I was. I would pick it up every, you know, three, four months. Um, and she'd be like, your mom's, you know, latest thing is ready. And um, we talk about it. So, you know, you just don't be afraid to ask. A local business you know think out of the box and you know think about what your you know person you're giving the gift to um what they like and then you know ask them hey could, you know could my husband come for golf lessons one day you know in your golf sim for example um you never know what people are willing to say yes to so 
Yeah, that's great. So many options out there that we're not even thinking of. Um, yeah, we got lots of good feedback in the chat too. Um, some ideas that people have done before. Um, Donna's done cloth bags before, um, but I guess now she's considering just using the sheets as well. Um, Joanne and Clark uh, will reuse their cards from year to year. Um, so that's really good too. The other thing yeah. with the Christmas cards, I know I was talking about, you know, making your Christmas card into a decorative thing, but you can also cut cut your Christmas cards from the years past and use that as a tag too. Right. Um, so I, we've done that before. Yeah, that is a good idea. Um, yeah, and Joanna Clark also said that they know someone who leaves their Christmas tree out and then they'll redecorate it uh, for different holidays and things as the seasons go on. Pretty cool. Um, what was the name of your um, sort of group that you have on Facebook that promotes those areas? I just want to reiterate that. Yeah, so it's called Reusable Revolution in Muskoka. Okay. I think that's what the tag is if you're looking yeah. for it. Um, green logo. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But that, that's where we would highlight any, um, you know, local things that are happening and local businesses that are, you know, um, like, for example, a restaurant that allows you to bring your, your container, things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, I'm definitely going to look into that and join the group. <laughs> awesome. Susan also says that she'll make tiny boxes out of used gift cards. Cool. What a great idea. And you could even sell those at a, like at a craft market. I buy them. <laughs> <laughs> there, you got a customer. Christina's going to buy. <laughs> um, Joanne and Clark asked, what is the name of the organization that has the workshop? that you mentioned? Um, was it the sourdough bread making? Maybe that was the oven in Bracebridge. Um, and they do that, I think, year after year. The one that I had the certificate for was Metatron's Garden in Gravenhurst, and that's a singing bowl workshop. Um, so she doesn't, am it's amazing. You just lay there and let the vibration, it's uh, very healing too. And so she does those quite often. I'm not sure if those are the ones you were talking about. The other one was the knife blading workshop, which was in Huntsville. Um, his name is Henshaw Blades, H-E-N-S-H-A-W. Um, he has a fantastic workshop in, in Huntsville, and he also teaches at a university as well. Very cool. Yeah, I'm interested in that one, too. <laughs> so many great ideas. I think that did answer your question. And Stephen said that he agrees an artificial tree is less waste, um, especially if it's used for five years or more, or 10 plus even. Yeah, it's one of those things that people look at it and go, ah, it's, it's a bunch of garbage. But, you know, we've had the same one forever and we will continue to have it forever unless my dogs chew it apart, uh, but I don't anticipate that. Um, the reusable revolution doesn't exist. I'm just reading, Susan, your, your comment. Um, doesn't technically exist outside of Facebook, um, you know, but feel free to email me if you have any, you know, questions or anything. I'm always happy to... Uh, to, to speak with people about it. It's more of just a place where we kind of highlight things. We don't have a website or anything. Um, it's just a place that my friend and I go to, to to try to get the word out for people to cut their waste. Cool. Does anyone have any other questions or stories or ideas? Feel free to unmute or put them in the chat, but thank you so much, Christina. I love this topic a lot um, and I'm glad to see that I've done some things this year and I'm definitely going to implement some things next year too. So that's just great. Great. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for uh, sitting through it and listening. I could go on all day as you <laughs> probably see. I can go on all day about zero waste, um, but I hope that, um, you know, everyone will, it'll kind of spark some interest to go look at some of the local shops and, and see what kind of, kind of outside of the box gifts and, and things like that that you can, uh, that you can find. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for joining. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and we'll see you in the new year. Thank you very much, everybody. Happy new year. Have Merry Christmas. Thanks everyone. Bye.